A hike and bike trail along Lady Bird Lake and feet from the end of Rainy Street in downtown Austin, Texas is now becoming a place of various police interest as four bodies have now been recovered along the shoreline this year alone in 2023. And now a fourth body has been pulled from the Texas lake in the latest disturbing find, sparking rumours that a serial killer could be on the loose. Many men have turned up dead in Austin, Texas, along the Lady Bird Lake, a stretch of the Colorado River running through the heart of the city, and near a popular strip of bars and food trucks on Rainy Street. And according to reports, as many as eight in the past 10 months have been found dead. However, while police say that they have found no signs of trauma to the victims, or evidence to suggest any foul play, and experts on the outside say so many drownings in one area needs to be looked at and certainly suggests a cause for concern, as well as a huge coincidence. Kevin Gannon, a former NYPD detective sergeant, told how although the lake and bars have been there for years, all of a sudden these deaths happen at the same time. And this is not consistent with normal accidental drownings, especially when it takes effort to get down to the waterfront from the popular night spot, which is a couple of blocks away. The answers to other lingering questions are likely known to investigators, but not to the public. A criminal profiler who has interviewed numerous serial killers said, I would be interested in knowing what these guys had in common besides Rainy Street. Did they go to the same bar? Something else that bothers me is that they seem not to be with friends. They're all alone. Austin police recently identified the latest victim on Monday afternoon as John Christopher Hayes Clark, a 30-year-old male. Officers found Jonathan Christopher Hayes Clark, aged 30, after responding to calls related to a possible dead body in the water in the 2700 block of Canterbury Street on the April the 15th at 1.20pm. First responders performed a water rescue, after which Jonathan was pronounced dead on the scene. Police said that they do not suspect foul play, was involved in his death based on the available information, but added that the investigation is still in the early stages. The police did not provide any further information. He was pronounced dead at the scene near a dam about two miles down river from where the other bodies were found and closer to Rainy Street. The homicide unit responded to the scene and investigated the incident. Police said it was a very unfortunate incident, but up until this point they have not discovered anything suspicious tied directly to this incident. The statement did not quell the city's concerns for a repeat murderer could be on the loose targeting young men around the age of 30. This year, Jason John, aged 30, was the first this year to be found dead in the Austin Lake. His, bo his body was rescued from the water in February, only one week after he'd last been seen on Rainy Street, a popular bar and restaurant strip about a mile from the lake. Austin police said that 6.40pm on February the 13th, officers found John in Lady Bird Lake near 30 East Avenue. We heard there was some activity by the lake, the family said, and we knew we had to rush down there because we were told that there was actually police tape up. According to a spokesperson with the Austin Travis County EMS medics were called out to the Lady Bird Lake near Cumming Street and East Avenue on Monday evening where medics pulled a body out of the water. The John family said the Travis County Medical Examiner's Office confirmed that it was Jason. We're still in shock. We're still processing but at least now we have closure, his brother said. Jason had been missing since February the 5th. He'd last been seen leaving Rainy Street after a night out with friends and according to his older brother, surveillance video picked him up walking for 10 minutes of Jason's walk home but then the other 8 minutes were left undocumented due to a lack of cameras on the trail. Over a week later, Jason's body was found in the lake. 
His brother said that the medical examiner told the family that there was no visible damage or scars on Jason's body during examination. It's never easy, we're just going to continue to remember him, they said. Jason was the voice of the family because he was such a friendly guy. He was the jokester, he made everyone so happy and laugh and I'm going to miss his presence. The family believes that the trail by the lake needs better lighting and cameras. And his mum said that the main thing she wants is the trail to be lit up and for there to be cameras there. It would be the ultimate testimony to Jason's life. Jason, who passed away, known as JJ, on the 5th of February 2023 at the age of 30, lived in Austin, Texas. He was born on November the 25th, 1992 in Port Chester, New York, to his parents, John and Elsie. Jason was a big brother to Rinju John and Jason and Justin John, and he had a sister-in-law named Ginny George, and his girlfriend was named Tara. He attended Corpus Christi Elementary School in Port Chester Middle School and Port Chester Middle School. He was an intelligent boy who had received a scholarship to the Brunswick High School and Greenwich. Also obtained his bachelor's degree in business administration in New York University and started his career in New York City before moving to Florida where the weather was beautiful. Even during the COVID period, he travelled around the United States and worked remotely. And in 2021, he settled in Austin with his new puppy, Ruffle. Justin was one of the most loving, caring, giving and empathetic people that anyone could meet. He led his life with an attitude of service to others and was known among his friends as someone who brought everyone together. He was very loved by his family and highly respected within his professional community. He had a great fondness of hiking and adventure. His family are going to miss him very much. One month later, an unidentified man was pulled from the water in April. 33-year-old Jonathan Honey was found dead in the lake, just one day after he was reported missing. The Austin Police Department said that 33-year-old Jonathan Honey was found dead in Ladybird Lake near Rainy Street on the 1st of April, where he was being reported missing on the 31st. He was in town for a bachelor's trip, according to friends of Jonathan Honey. He was found 12.49pm on Saturday near Rainy Street, and police said in a news release that Jonathan Honey was reported missing to Austin Police on the 31st of March. The investigation into the circumstances of Jonathan Honey's death is ongoing and the Travis County Medi Medical Examiner's Office will determine his cause of death. Jonathan was last seen leaving Rainy Street, an area where renovated houses had been turned into bungalow bars after a night out with friends. His mother, Elise, told the news that hearing about another victim is like the trauma happening over again. We're in disbelief. I felt like watching a scary movie or a horror movie, she said. That is how I felt. I felt at that moment. John's death was ruled accidental, but his mother does not agree with that and says she will continue fighting to make sure others do not meet the same fate. Jonathan Honey is the second person whose body was found under similar circumstances in the last few months and one of several cases like this in recent years. But late Monday, Austin police released a statement stressing detectives do not suspect foul play in any of these cases. The family said, I was like, oh my God, we were just literally there. People who hang out on Rainy Street were shocked to hear about the discovery on Saturday afternoon of the body of Jonathan Honey after the 33-year-old was last seen at a taco truck on Rainy Street around 2am. Austin police are still investigating how he died. He was a husband of Kirsten. They had been married for seven years. He worked as a welder to provide for his growing family. He was born in Bethlehem and he was a son of Lee, John, Honey and Tanya. Surviving in addition to his widow and parents are his maternal grandmother, Anna, and his grandparents, Lee and Sharon. He had three sons, Jeremiah, Jackson and Jonathan Jr. Two sisters, Kayla and Carissa. 
and three brothers, Justin Honey and his wife Tiffany and Joshua and Ryan Honey. He also proceeded by his twin brother, Jeremy Honey, and a brother named Austin Honey. In recent years, at least five men in their 20s and 30s have been found in the lake under similar circumstances. In 2015, Julia Santos, aged 22, was found in the lake. In 2018, Martin Guterres, 25, was also found in the lake. In 2019, a year later, Christian Pugh, 21, was found but was alive. And in February 2023, this year, Jason John, aged 30, was found. In April, Jonathan Honey, 33, was found. This is the second incident, roughly a month, where someone has disappeared and ended up in the lake. Though the cause of Hay's death is still not clear, police said that the three of the men died from a combination of alcohol and easy access to the Ladybird Lake and did not show signs of trauma. The Austin Police Department are aware of the speculations regarding the recent drownings. Although these cases are still under investigation and evidence is being analysed at this time, the frustration is that there is still no evidence in any of these cases to support allegations of foul play. While each incident has occurred at, at the take, the circumstances and demographics around these cases vary our investigations approach even evidence. The police stated that we work very closely with the Travis County Med Medical Examiners, which conducts a parallel investigation into all the deaths. The medical examiner performs autopsies in each of these types of death investigations and the results of these autopsies have not, been, have not revealed any trauma to the bodies nor indication of foul play. One common theme of the drownings in Austin this year is the combination of alcohol and easy access to the ladybird take. It's also challenging to see at night due to the lack of lights. The park in which most of these drownings have occurred are in darkened areas and occur where the park closes. We advise that public follow the rules of the park closures. While the investigation is still in the early stages, we do not suspect foul play was involved. Based on the information we have at this, Jamie Hammonds of Dash ATX also raised doubts about the deaths being a series of accidental drownings and told the news station that he heard repeatedly from locals nightmare stories of getting slipped drugs on Rainy Street. I've been digging into this now for the last couple of weeks, he said, pretty much every day, and the odds of this happening, this many deaths in this one spot, all men around the same age, the odds are pretty astronomical. If this is just a coincidence, he said, the autopsy results were not yet available, but police said the victims showed no signs of trauma. There are too many people that have been injured. There are too many people that can walk off and we still have absolutely no answers as to what has happened to any of these folks. Christian went missing for several days in 2019 after partying on Rainy Street. Search teams actually found him alive, but in a very rough condition, disorientated in the brush of a hiking trail on the other side of the lake. One common theme of the drownings in Austin this year is the combination of alcohol and easy access to the lake. They noted that these areas close at 10 p.m. and urged people not to enter them at night. However, investigations into each of the deaths remained active this week, and despite the lack of evidence and foul play, speculation about a possible serial killer has swirled. However, the Lake case appears to have more in common with more recent crimes, beginning in the mid-1990s. A gang of smiley face killers has been proposed as the source of numerous deaths of young men found in the Midwest. In those cases, young men fit Young, fit men were found dead and their bodies in the water after they'd last been seen out drinking. Last month, New York City announced investigations into two separate gangs suspected of drugging people in Manhattan bars in order to use the victim's unconscious faces to unlock their phones with facial recognition technology. 
the thieves drained their mobile banking applications like Venmo and Cash App, those rings are still under investigation, although prosecutors have announced arrests and indictments just from the sheer number and the fact that there are so many in a short period of time. While Austin police investigate the deaths, city officials have also addressed safety concerns about the waterfront by installing new fencing and weighing proposals ranging from adding lights and increasing police patrols. From outside in, not having been there, it appears to have been targeted just because of the numbers. The Austin police the Austin City Council discussed potential upgrades and near the Rainy Street trailhead between the Nightlife District and the River Bank, including adding park ranger patrols and stationary emergency responders in the area. The man whose son was found in 2019 called for cameras to be installed in the area. Michael Gutierrez, whose brother drowned after going missing from Rainy Street in 2018, said at the meeting that he believes 12 people have died in a similar fashion by his count since his brother's death. His brother, Martin Gutierrez, was an experienced swimmer. He had swam competitively in high school. And I can't understand how somebody like that would just fall in the water and drown his brother.